are there any laws to copywriting you know rules that have never changed which you can apply and get results from well ash when you when you sent me that question i thought that's a really interesting uh, subject to ponder because you really have to step back because obviously if there are rules and laws and things you always have to do i just tend to do them automatically but i i did step back and come up with a list of about five and some of them will be obvious and some of them may may not be but add them together and you, you shouldn't go too far wrong uh, the first one is i'm afraid grammar and spelling your know, grammar and spelling have to be impeccable largely because people notice if they're not um, the example i always use is someone I was on a call with who was telling me, oh, I've got a mate of mine who needs some marketing help. He's, he's opened a new place. No, no names, no pack drill. So while I was on the call, clicked up his website, and I said he needs a copywriter as well because the first line on the website was a question, who's it for? And he'd spelled who's wrong. I said, well, that, it's not just me. I mean, obviously, I'm, I, I, I shy away from the description grammar Nazi and prefer grammar Spartan. <laughs> but they are so important and, and what, what, what's come across to me over the last couple of years is it's not just me. People really, really notice. And lots of people notice when they can't do it themselves, but lots and lots of people notice when other people get it wrong. So it may be sort of um, copywriting 101, but make sure your grammar and spelling are absolutely impeccable. Um, the next thing I'd always say is keep it simple. I think people think when you're a writer, you've got to try to create vast vistas of imagery and and spectacular concepts but actually some most of what you're doing is getting a message across so keep it as simple as you possibly like i i saw someone yesterday said about about hemingway that um he was criticized once that he never used words that would make you have to check in a dictionary and actually if you're a copywriter you invert that you you never want someone to read something you've written and have to go and look up what you mean it should be really simple to get, because you're there to get the message across you are there to transfer information from one party to another and the, the, the simpler the easier and more accessible that is the better it's going to be and that that kind of ties into the next point which is always have your audience in mind and if you're copywriting on behalf of someone else you have to sort of put yourself in their shoes and know who it is they're trying to talk to and what it is they're trying to say to them that in, in turn will dictate the tone of voice but you're always kind of taking yourself to the other side of the room and listening to how the words are coming to you and they should be coming to you as like i say as easily and accessibly and as informatively as they possibly can um the other things i would suggest it's and this is showing my journalistic roots here but get the headline right and get the intro right and everything else will follow um, when I was training as a journalist, I think we were told about the pyramid, you know, all, all the important stuff is at the top and then it kind of tapers as you go down. And if you get the, if you get the intro right, you know, because the rest of the copy just flows after it. And that's exactly the same if you're writing in a commercial context, because you're trying to hook the reader's attention. So that, that intro, you put so much effort into getting it right. And I know that there are SEO um, considerations when you're talking about websites which can which can sometimes slightly compromise the absolute literary perfection of your headline and the intro but getting it right you, you, you've got people because people's attention spans are so short you need to get them quickly you need to tr attract their attention I think oh, these people know what they're talking about I'll keep reading um, and what was that I think there might have been something else yeah this this is this is especially on commercial copywriting and you see it quite a lot because you are all you're there to deliver a message you're there to convince people of the essential rightness and interest of the uh, the products and services you're talking about but sometimes you get to the end and there's no call to action and there should always be something at the foot of a piece of commercial copy that says and now i want you to do this you've read all about us we've told you all our great stories now pick up the phone go to our contact form get in touch because that call to action sometimes people just need to be given a delicate little nudge in the right direction so everything i, I try to everything i write every page i write for people's websites at the end it's and now do this um, i'm sure we could probably sit and talk for two hours about other rules and regulations but i'm hoping those that those are the kind of the basics you can start off with yeah 
No, I think we should carry on talking about what's number six. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, so to, to summarise, it's spelling and grammar, number one. Number two is keep it simple. A, a great thing I was told is keep it simple, stupid. Is yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, number three is to keep the audience in mind. Oh, number nice. four, the headline, the intro. And number five is that call to action, that nudge in the gentle direction we always want to go. Yeah, like I say, there's there's all kinds of things that you can talk about as being, you know, desirable to create great mm. copy. But those things you won't go far wrong. I mean, going back to the the audience and the spelling and grammar, there's, there's one sort of rule I follow is if, if you're reading something and you're flying through a sentence and you stop and have to go back and read it again, then rewrite it. Because if your eye trips over it for whatever reason, then the reader's eye is going to trip over it and you've, you've lost the rhythm, you've lost that, that lovely sense that they're being carried along on a beautiful, flowing piece of copy. So obviously always read everything back first. Um, and just to check, yes to check the spelling, yes to check the grammar, but also check that you've got a flow to 